Hello everyone, it's Jack here, and I'm here with the Life is Strange Director's Commentary! I didn't really call m myself a director for this, but whatever, I've sort of created it. But I also created it with the music man who comes from down the way, Fargo! Say hello. Hello. Congratulations. Do you have anything else to add? Yes, your ego has grown out of control. Well, I am a super famous YouTube star. I make the YouTube bucks, despite the fact I have not made any money. All 12 of them. Not really a lot of money in the YouTube game. Become bankers, kids. That's where the money is. Destroy the economy. But anyway, enough, uh, enough rebellious talk. How about we get on with the first episode, shall we? Where it all began. <laughs> And so it begins. Do, do you ever wonder if maybe your introduction to Max's voice was a bit too harsh? Uh, I was actually very, very self-conscious about it as soon as I released it. I know it, I know for a fact it actually, like, deterred a few people away. It's people that I know. People who, like, said to my face, I'm sorry, I just can't deal with that voice. <laughs> Uh, I do it in the later episodes where I kind of like try and introduce the series with like a lighter voice, one that people <laughs> can get into a bit easier. Uh, Max has a unique voice. Where where did Max's unique voice even come from? Max's uh, unique voice was a placeholder, which I just never removed. Uh, did you I, have? Uh, no, did I have inspiration? Is that what you're going for? No, I so said. Did you have any further voices planned? No, I just kind of did like a really high pitched Scottish voice and it just kind of stuck. Uh, it, uh, and when I say stuck, I mean I just never changed it. Never mm. put much thought past it. Uh, but it got better. It got better throughout the series. Less shrill, a bit more rounded. You can. It, but it's still very shrill here. I mean, first episodes. Yeah, speaking of first episode voices. Here's that kid named from Ninja Theory class. Whose voice will dramatically lower in pitch over the course of the series. Yeah, in, the, in this episode he sounds exactly like Warren. I feel like that's the reason I kind of changed it. Mm. And Chloe, Chloe also sounds very shrill and her, all of her speech is disjointed, <coughs> which was meant to be a joke, but it kind of didn't really go anywhere. I remember Chloe was the only voice you were actually unhappy with until the second episode. Yeah, no, I wasn't, wasn't happy with Chloe at all. But uh, she got a lot better, and now, like, I've got a nice buddy pair with, like, Max and Chloe now. I like them much better. Unlike uh, Kate, who we all hate. No, I like Kate. Although I don't, I don't like how to make Kate's voice, because she's the only character who I voice modulate for. <laughs> like, I raise the pitch, but I can only... I only get that exact tone I want if I use a certain editing program. Like, any other editing program doesn't do it right. I have to use Sony Vegas. <sighs> Which, Which is uh, a terrible editing program. Yeah, it's not great. It's not great. But, you know, it made this magnificent editing masterpiece. Ah, oh, and uh, David Madsen. I know, you, when I pitched David Batson's idea, you said this is just the lowest hanging fruit joke you could have gone for, but like, I came up with like a few a few other ideas, like, I could make him really liberal and gay. <laughs> this That would have been a much, much... Yeah, that would have been a worse idea. Yeah. <clears throat> um, the principle sort of came from... It was mostly me cramming my own ideas into it, in which, for the entirety of the first episode, he is the least concerned principal on the face of the planet. Yeah. Um, to the point where I just had to believe he was didn't care. Yeah. Yeah, and you you kind of like adopted the principle in like later episodes. I mean, he was he was so easy to do things with. He was very easy to voice as well. <laughs> Although in this, he has a strange southern twang in this episode. Yeah, I don't know. I felt like he wasn't. He was like not. He was too monotone, maybe. <coughs> But then, like, after it came out, I just thought, ah, you know what, he's not monotone enough. Also, why didn't I edit this? Why didn't I edit this with, like, funny text? This is... Ah. Uh, and also, it's Warren, because... Um, this is a feeling I developed throughout the series, but I don't like Warren. 
I think in this scene as well, you were trying to get as many of the side characters into it as possible in the belief that they would somehow become important. Yeah. And that yeah. turned out to be very not true. Yeah, Danny Boy here didn't really go anywhere. But uh, I, do like the I do like the joke, though. Mm, mm, it is a good joke. And it was like my first... Yeah, e editing. Yeah. It took me like ages to know how to do that. And now I'm like, why did it take you so long to know how to do that? <sighs> Actually, if you want to know a voice I'm still not happy with, it's Victoria. Victoria sounds a bit like you. I don't trying sound like that. <laughs> no, it sounds a bit like you trying to sound like a girl. I, I, yeah, are you saying that all the rest of these voices aren't me going, Girl voice, girl voice! <laughs> no, it's sort of like, if you if you had a girlfriend you were trying to make fun of, that's the voice you would put on. Uh, historically, for situations like that, I've used Max's voice. If you... Fun fact for everyone. Uh... I love that joke. That was a good joke. <laughs> I, th I think that was one of the first jokes I thought of. It's an obvious joke. I mean, this is a very white game. It, it, it is a very white game. Actually, is there... No, there are there are uh, non-white people in this. Yeah, there's plenty of non-white people, but the vast majority are white, doing yeah. very white things. <laughs> yeah. yeah. To it a is very a white soundtrack. Very white soundtrack. Well, you know, that's the whole hipster thing. You don't... Uh, the hipster thing is often like seen as a very white thing, but let's not make this about like uh, no, no. Poli cultural politics or whatever. I think it was important I didn't edit to that either. I think it was sort of important to, to you didn't go for the easy hipster jokes, which was very good. If you say so, uh, that's, those are your comments, there's, not mine. <laughs> there's a few of them, but you don't labor on it. Also, that was my guitar playing. Thank you very much, everyone. I will yes. accept donations. Yes, I actually told you. So you know, like how when people are playing piano badly, could you make that but with a guitar? And you kind of did that, so that was great. It was a, it was it was Wonderwall played completely detuned in that of rhythm. And it was it was perfect. It is exactly what I wanted. Uh, your your later musical contributions there were much, on much more on point. Weirdly enough, you didn't tell me to make them terrible. This is also a good joke. It's this thing like I I keep I do this a few times through the episodes where Max says I've got to do something, but as soon as I finish doing this and this, because that's kind of what happens in the game, and it's really <laughs> weird. It's sort of what's carry carried through the entire abridged series where Max's absent-mindedness turns into a form of narcissism. Yeah, like, you kind of like those jokes the best where Max is actually a terrible person to people. I, I think I push the most for making Max a terrible person. Well, I mean, if you want, like, a character study, I'd say Max is pretty a terrible person. Max is very much a terrible person. Yeah. Oh god, the Dante joke. The Dante jokes, like, I thought, yeah, I'll just say he gets a new nickname every episode, that'd be great. He didn't appear in every episode, and then, like, yeah. I kind of, like, lost where I was meant to be going with that. I think every, uh, you tied it in every other character starts to lose what his name is supposed to be. Yeah. Uh, the, the, only, the only thing I had was, logical endpoint, he says my name is not important, because it's the hatred thing. <laughs> Look, the, uh, the terrorist jokes I just love. Terrorist. They are, and it hit, and it all paid off in the final episode. It is very interesting, like as a game, introducing your like sort of character bromance, or in this case, assistance. It only really comes halfway through. Yeah, it comes halfway through the first episode, but I, I mean, they kind of like go full on on it. The, the narcissism here showing. I sort of feel like um. To sort of talk about the game, it's the fact you don't get an insight into the relationship beforehand always sort of hurts it. No, but I feel like the characters do a good enough job to like just explain it a little bit. And there's a few like flashback moments where you can like sit down and hear like moments of the past beforehand. So I don't know. It, it's it's all right in that regard on my half, but here's Max wrecking everything. How does she manage to wreck all of these things? She is Max is the clumsiest person in the world. Like every single time she does anything, she has to fail it first. 
But is she clumsy because she's clumsy, or is she clumsy because she doesn't care about other people's property? Uh, a bridge Max doesn't care. Okay. Also, oh, this, this is this is a <laughs> this is a joke, all right. <laughs> this was so Silent Hill. I'm not. I I I'm almost like disappointed in myself. I didn't do anything like this afterwards, but I kind of wanted to like show Max isn't all the way in there in the head. And I I also only got the idea of um telling you to do this, but I completely forgot until the episode is up. I want to recommend putting the Silent Hill siren. The, the, air raid, the air raid siren that comes on when uh, Silent Hill turns into its, uh, well, hell world. Ah, uh, right, the dark world thing. Yeah. Well, I, I've never actually uh, played Silent Hill. It's just, I don't know, I had the idea to do that. But then again, I, 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 a lot of the things that are kind of inspire from this, especially that first joke at the very, very beginning, which we went past, uh, the Donnie Darko. I've never actually seen Donnie Darko. That was your joke. Yeah. There's a lot of Donnie Darko and a lot of butterfly effect in this game. I can definitely see the butterfly effect. And uh, not not to say anything about the game, but I don't know why you take inspiration from the butterfly effect. No, that is quite a quite a bad movie. Yeah. Not a bad concept necessarily, but the melodramatic extremes that movies go to just become funny. Yeah. And we I'm sorry, we're just talking over like him saying that Max is part of ISIS and just I feel like you did roll back on him a little bit. Well, he didn't. He doesn't appear as much. No. Um, but I did want to like keep him as like a solid character throughout everything. I think everyone had pretty solid character from the like, if they were introduced in the first episode. Well, apart from all the side characters, but that's well, less your fault. Well, I just didn't really have them. Like Chloe still seemed still stayed a rather ditzy hipster stoner thing. Who uses like, who uses them youth slang words in a kind of "how do you do, my fellow kids" way, which I actually say in this episode, don't I? And here we have the cover of Obstacles, which sounds rough because it was recorded on an iPhone. It sounds good, though. It does. I also realized. A little while ago, I'm actually playing the song wrong. There's an extra note in the arpeggio that I keep missing. Oh, uh, that's just a light way of getting aware of the YouTube content ID. Yes, thank you. I was about to say that. <laughs> it was not a mistake. Yeah. Also, God, I didn't... Look how, I look didn't how small like... the music credits are, too. Oh, yeah. Like, they got much better, bigger as time went on. Ah, uh, And then we get the first stinger, which... I kind of stopped doing after a while because the episodes were getting very long. And also the um, the next time on Life is Strange parts in the actual game are very brief. They are very brief and they don't really give off a lot so I kind of just had to replace it with here's a joke like uh, episode 3 I do just just a long... You know we're going to get to episode 3 later. We are. Uh, to make one final word I didn't realise how much I used to reference. Like, a lot of that was just uh, quite a lot of references in there. Like I said, the how do you do my fellow kids, which is the uh, the Steve Buscemi thing. Uh, I don't know yeah. what that was from. Uh, it's from, oh, it's just 40 Rock? Of, 40 Rock, I think so. I think that I might am, be what it's called. If, if someone in the comments can correct us, I'm not up to date on my American comedic shows. It's that gif that gets thrown around everywhere. <laughs> Uh, and also, like, right at the end there, there was the reference to the live-action Acura thing by Harry Partridge. Oh, yeah. Uh, and which I kind of bring up a few times again, just because it's the f it's a nice way to end the episode, I thought. It is. Uh, also, I, I hope don't you're know how to some end. Nice, I hope you're going to put some nice footage over this so people aren't just looking at a black screen. Um, I don't know. Maybe I'll just put a, pic a naked picture of Max. I don't know. I'm crazy. Please, don't. please, please don't. I probably won't because we're going to get a naked picture of Max next time on Life is Strange Abridged. We are? Do you not even remember episode two? I mean, it's not really a naked picture of Max. Okay, it's... naked video of Max. <laughs> oh, things are getting... Yeah, things are getting saucy. Things are getting 4chan on here. <laughs> See you next time. Used to sign off.